variables for the problems. Find um, the variables, find the formula for the objective function and then find the constraints. So those are the four things you have to do for this week. Well, of course, and you have to submit submit the, um, um, the document with those three things for both products. Okay, guys, questions so far about part one. Remember, you only have to find the variables, the formula for the objective function. Oh, I'm redundant here. And the constraints. And of course, submit it. Is there any question? I think that's pretty straightforward. Guys. Okay, okay. I, uh, sometimes I lose I lose my internet connection, so um, be aware of that. That happens sometimes. I hope it doesn't ha happen today. So that's the reason I was like asking if you were around. And well, besides, I don't like to talk to nobody. I have a wall here, so I don't like to talk to a wall. Okay, so. First thing you have to find, the objective function. Now be careful, you don't have to submit the objective function. What you have to submit is the formula, but it's better if you find first the objective function. And this is basically what you have to maximize or minimize. It is usually after the keywords, maximum, maximize, minimum, or minimize. Or some related words. No, it is not always a maximum minimum, but sometimes you have to look for the longest or shortest or any other superlative. So when, so read carefully the problem, uh, it is usually actually on the question, on the question for the problem. After the keywords, okay. So, oh, one more thing. Please be as specific as possible. And label it in less than five words. Um, on the project, you're gonna see questions that are really, really long. And you're gonna have so many things, and some people are going to believe that the whole thing is the objective function. However, you have to only decide which one of those parts is the one that you need for your objective function. I'm going to give you an example later. Right now I'm gonna explain so we can start working on the problems after all the explanations. Okay, so next part. We need after the objective function, we need to find the variables. This is uh, what you need, no, the elements. Those are the elements that you need to find. Or actually, they are things describing the problem, but their quantities are not there yet. The variables are usually found um, 
on the question. After the words, how many or configuration. Now, be careful because sometimes this uh, whatever is after the words how many or configuration is not completely clear or it is not specific, so you have to specify. Sometimes the terms after the words, after the keywords, are not specific. So you have to read again and find the specifications. Okay, let me change something here. Okay guys, before giving you examples because I'm gonna give you examples later. Is this kind of clear so far? Do you have a question before I finish explaining and the, the problems, the examples? Okay, that looks good. So I'm gonna tell you, constraints are inequalities. The left hand side of the inequality is a formula, uh oh, no, um, you know what, sorry about it, I forgot something, before the constraints, something that is absolutely important, so it is the objective function, but now it is the formula, so create a formula to calculate the objective function, using the variables found on the previous step, the variables, the variables found, and the corresponding numbers that are related in the problem. Okay, sorry about it, but that was important and I had to set it right there. So constraints, so constraints uh, are inequalities, and the left-hand side of the inequality is a formula using the variables and the corresponding numbers. The right hand side, oh well, I don't know, I'm mean, sleepy. I'm forgetting so many things. Well, constraints are inequalities that count the number of resources used and resources available. So the left hand side of the inequality is a formula using the variables and the corresponding numbers. It's a formula that gets uh, the, num the resources used. And the right hand side the right hand side is the number of resources available. So remember constraints count resources. Okay, so those are the four basic things that you need. I'm gonna ask you something, guys. Look at here and give me a color. Which color of those do you want? Okay, so I saw green and blue. Okay, green and blue. So I'm gonna say green is going to be the objective function. Every time we see something about the objective function, it's going to be green. And every time we see something about the variables, we're gonna use light blue. I don't like dark blue because it is impossible to see. Let me check. Can you see anything there? Nope, okay, yeah, I agree, so it's better light blue. Just wanted to make sure. Okay, so now I'm gonna switch. The problem is I have the, um, 
the go, go to training control panel on the right hand side and I can type on the right hand side. Okay, guys. So, uh, on problem number one, let's focus on problem number one. First thing we need to find what is the objective function? Can you tell me what is specifically the objective function for this problem? The profit, actually we have to maximize the profit. Well, actually, I'm gonna say only in one word, profit. That's what we have to maximize. Or that's what we have to find, the maximum profit, as I told you. This is gonna be green. So, we want to maximize profit. So here in the problem, you can see it. And on the setup, you can see that's a different function. Okay. Now, the variables. What things you don't know and they help you to calculate the profit? What you don't what things you don't know the amount and they can help you? How a uh, how many of each for a boat type? That's good, William. Now be more specific. Quantity of tugboats and lobster boats constructed. Awesome. So we have to be more specific and we need to label the letters. We, we need to use letters. Um, actually, it is not one of the, or the other, James. Actually, you have to, to focus on both. How many units from, from, one, uh, from one kind and how many units from the other kind? So we're going to say X is the number of the uh, lobster boats. And Y is the number of uh, tugboats constructed. Okay, so now I told you that this is going to be blue. So look at this. Here we have the word how many, the words how many of each type of boat should be built. So this, this represents the variables, but we have to be more specific. Yes, William. That's the reason we put it there. Because it is going to be like, um, this kind of problems is going to be almost like that. Now, this is going to be a, a little bit bigger, but at least you have the idea. And well, here we have the types of variables we're going to have. No, we have the variables, and the types of variables are here. Two types of model boats, lobster boats and dog boats. And well, this is blue. Okay, guys, um, what is the objective function formula? Or what formula calculates the profit? So I can, get, I can tell you this, profit is equal to something. Now remember, you need to use the variables and you need to use the corresponding number for those variables. William, thank you. It says here before the question, if the profit is $7 per lobster boat, so here, specifically, it's saying profit uh, per lobster boat. So we know that this is going to be X. And then it says $15 per dog boat. So immediately, this is going to be 7X plus 15Y. Okay, and I, as, as I said before, this is going to be green. So this is green. And this part is green. Here is where we calculate the formula. 
Okay, guys, questions so far about the objective function and the variables. Okay, guys. Now we're going to go with the constraints. And to find the constraints, I'm going to ask you first. What are the resources we are using to build the boats? Don't give me numbers yet, only names. What are the resources? Okay, pine home material. Mahogany. Mahogany cabin material. And then we have classic fittings. Uh, Jonathan, try to be more specific. Don't, don't be lazy and don't say you one word to describe. Try to use everything. Classic fittings. Okay. Now, what you have to do is to create inequalities. Can you create an inequality for pine hole material where the left hand side is counting the number of uh, the amount of material used and the right hand side is the number of material available? Find an inequality for pine hull material. The inequality is um, a formula on the left using the variables and the corresponding numbers, and the right-hand side of the inequality is the number of resources available. Jonathan, you are almost right. I'm going to give you a 95 out of, out of 100. But uh, your, numbers and, your numbers are correct and the, and the variables. So first, here we have that each lobster boat uses 25 centimeters of pine hull material. So that is immediately 25x. We have here that uh, each dog boat uses 20 centimeters of pine hull material. So that's 20. So that's 21. And here on the right hand side, we're going to have the 3,000 centimeters available. The problem with Jonathan that Douglas found was that this is going to be an inequality. So don't forget the symbol is going to be less than or equal to. We have resources available, but we don't know if we're going to use all the resources. We may use all the resources, but we want to use at least less than the resources available. So that's the reason we always need the less than or equal to. Okay, guys, so now give me a formula for um, for mahogany cabin material and inequality. In the meantime, I'm color coding this. What is the inequality for mahogany cabin material?
4x plus 8y is less than or equal to 720. So again, using some color coding, I'm gonna use purple or pink. So here we have four centimeters of mahogany cabin material. So that is 4x, then eight centimeters of mahogany cabin, that's 8y. And then we know that we have 720 centimeters available. Now, one for plastic fitting, sir. Hey guys. I guess this is gonna be really easy now. Uh, no, Jonathan? Yes, 2x plus 8y has to be less than or equal to, oops, less than or equal to 640. Okay, I'm gonna use what? I'm gonna use mm, yellow for two plastic fittings here, for eight plastic fittings here, and 600 plus eight, 600 eight plastic fittings available. So the formula is this whole thing. Okay, guys, how is the setup for the problem? Is it good? Is it bad? Is it clear? as a puddle of mud. Awesome guys, sounds good. Every, everything makes perfect sense so far. Good so far, good so far, following so far. Awesome. That's good guys. Okay, so remember this is for Thursday. And don't forget, you only need the variables, you need the objective function formula and the constraints. Now the first part is just to make clear what you have to do. Um, no, William. Well, for, for, for Thursday, you're gonna, uh, you can down, uh, you're gonna be able to download a template. There is a template on part one of the problem. So download it and fill it out like this. Well, which ones are the variables? So fill out the variables. Then, what is the objective function formula? Plug it in. And then, which ones are the constraints? The only thing that you need is this part here. Oops, 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 oops. Okay. So I need to switch. Okay, part two, the document. So part two is due Sunday. Now you know what, I'm gonna put it here. So part two is do something and you have to find the solution to the problem, to, the, to both problems. Present an explanation about both problems about each problem as professional as possible like if you were submitting the few results to your supervisor or manager. Include um, 
include what? How can I call it? Graphing support. Include supporting aids. Like graphs. And spreadsheets. So that's what you have to do for part two. Okay, so for part one, you're going to submit the, um, the setup. The main idea is we're going to give you a grade for the setup and we're going to give you feedback. So if you have a formulas that are wrong, you can correct them and then you have to find the solution on Sunday. And don't forget, you have to show as many things. Um, yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to type it. Show as many things as you can on the document. Okay. So how to solve a two variable problem? So that's the first thing we we're gonna do. Oh by the oh no, not yet. So how to solve a two variable problem? I'm gonna give you bullets. Okay, first of all, first thing you have to do to solve a two variable problem. Graph the inequalities on, on a coordinate plane. Use the algebra or probably you can use desmos.com. That's good. Find, after you graph every single inequality or the constraints, the constraint inequalities. Then find the feasible area. The feasible area is where all the shadings intersect. then find the feasible points. Those are the points on the corners or intersections of the feasible area. Uh, William, yes, that's what I'm saying. Use GeoGebra. Actually, you need to graph it and then find the graph. And then check the graph and see what are the points. Okay, now, plot the feasible points on the objective function. Um, the point that gives uh, not, don't worry William, I'm going to tell you in a second, I'm going to show you. First, you know, I'm typing the steps. So the point that gives the maximum or minimum, depending on what you're looking for, is the solution to the problem. Well, the point that gives the maximum oh, and the corresponding maximum are the solutions to the problem. So remember, every solution contains a point and the maximum or the minimum. Okay, guys, questions about how to solve a two variable problem before giving you the example of how to solve it.
uh, the solution, well, the solution is one of the corners. And the result that you get from plugging the point is part of the solution. I have 28 people registered, only 12 are here. Okay. Instead of using GeoGebra, I prefer using this web page. And here you have the graph. So the only thing you have to do is plug in here the equations and that's all. Uh, can you tell me which one was the first inequality? Was that 25x plus 20y is less than or equal to 3,000? Or am I incorrect? Okay, that's good. So I'm going to do something here. I'm going to zoom out because I cannot see everything. Okay, now the main idea is we need to see the lines. As long as we see the lines, it's perfect. Second equation, what's the second equation? 4x plus 4y, no, 4x plus 8y less than or equal to 720. Is that correct? Ooh, nice. Third inequality. 2x plus 8y is less than or equal to 640. Okay, guys. So that is the graph of all three constraints. Now, which one is the feasible area? The feasible area is here where all three shadings, the red, the purple, and the green meet. So that means it is this part here on the corner on the left-hand side. So now we have to select the points. Be careful because the intersections include X and Y intersects. So we need this point. We need this point. We need this point here and then we need this point. One thing I like uh, from Desmos and I don't like on GeoGebra is the fact that you cannot find accurate points when you're working with inequalities. Here, for the inequalities, the points work really, really well. So those four points are the feasible points. Oh, you know what? I'm gonna sign in. Sign in with your Google account. Okay. So if you want, you can save the graph, you can save the changes, you can print or you can share. Or well, it's better if you try to copy paste or get it's better if you get a screenshot of this. If you get a screenshot, it would be awesome because we can see a, how you graph it. Okay, so uh, now I'm going to go back to my document. That's not what I want. I want this, and then I want this. Ah, no, that's not what I want. Okay, so now solving the problem. The feasible points are, the first point is, now you know what, I'm gonna move it a little bit. Oh, awesome. The feasible points are 0, 0,80. 
120, 0. Okay, so one of those four points is going to be the solution to the problem. So now what we have to do is plug uh, the, the numbers, the, the points, on the profit function, on the objective function. So I'm going to copy paste him. Oh, but first, I'm going to say, I'm going to use the first point. So 0, 80. So we have the profit function. I'm going to plug in. So there's going to be 0. And this is 80. You know what? I'm going to move this to the next page. So the total profit in this case is going to be equal to 15 times 80, which is 1,200. Next point, 40,70. So I'm going to plug in. This is going to be 40. And then this is 70. So the total profit is uh, 280 and 1,050, 1,050, 1,330.80,50. So you have to check each one of them. So the total profit here is going to be equal to 560 plus uh, 750. So this is 0, 1, 12, 13, 13, 10. And finally, the point 120, comma 0. So we have the profit is going to be equal in this case to 840. Okay, guys, which one of the points gives us the maximum value? Because we're looking for the maximum, right? 4070. So this is the solution here. I'm going to use another color. I'm going to use gray. Maximum profit. Okay, so the solution to the problem is to build 40 um, lobster boats and 70 dog boats to achieve Uh, the maximum profit of $1,330. Now, of course, you have to type a, a bigger document. It's not only uh, one, one sentence and that's all. Okay, guys, this is how you solve a two, pro a two variable uh, problem. Questions. By the way, first problem is complete. Oh, yes. Questions, guys, about it? Well, I want the, I want, a, well, you, if you want, you can say, well, one sentence, but remember, it is a written document where you try to explain anything or everything, actually. So you can give this, the answers in one sentence. However, you have to explain so many other things. So you're going to use more than a sentence. Okay, that's really good. I hate this. Perfect.
looks better okay guys read the second exercise and tell me what is the objective function oh by the way I have to change the document and I gotta go back here just in case you forgot so tell me what is the objective function of for the second problem Prove it again yes remember it is found after a the words maximize or maximum so it is here green and it is green here okay guys now tell me the variables Uh, William, I'm not going to call you a correct answer. Michelle, thank you. Creates for mirrors, bulletin boards, and cabinets. It is mirrors, not mirrors. Manipular. Okay, so I'm going to go with Michelle and I'm going to say that X is the number of crates for mirrors. Y is going to be the number of crates for bulletin boards. Yeah, William. And Z is going to be the number of crates for cabinets. Okay, guys, um, I'm going to tell you something. I'm not going to use the variables x, y, z. I'm going to use the variables x1, x2, and x3. The reason is, when you have more than three variables, you have to start looking for variables, for letters, all over the alphabet. And then you create a mess. And then things are not going to be really organized, and they're going to be really difficult, difficult to Find for yourselves and find and for, for us as well. So you have variable A, but variable A means I don't remember. It is going to, oh, okay. Um, you have to look for the answers everywhere. So it's better if you, if you number them. So first variable, second variable, third variable, fourth variable, tenth variable. So be careful there. Okay. Uh, this is going to be blue. Okay, guys. Uh, can you tell me the... Um, the objective function of formula? No, Steven. No, no, that's all right. Actually, what he did is a common mistake that happens in so many math problems. So what is the objective function? Formula.
two peop three people with the same mistake. Four people, whoa. Uh oh, this is becoming a problem. Okay, guys, read carefully. Here it says two dollars, five dollars, and ten dollars for each crate for bulletin boards, mirrors, and cabinets. So as you can see here, bulletin boards and mirrors are in different order. And in different order, bulletin boards go first and mirrors go second. So the two corresponds to the bulletin boards. So the two corresponds to X two. Yes, Jonathan. And 5 corresponds to x1. So the formula is 5x1 plus 2x2 plus 10x3. So yes, it is an English problem. The real problem with math is not math itself. It is English. Reading. You have to read carefully. Okay, let me go back to green. And now, find the constraints. William, yes, it matters because, well, it's not that it is addition or subtraction. Here, what matters is numbers and units should be consistent. So here, x1, number of, of crates for mirrors. So you have to use the numbers for crates for mirrors. You cannot use uh, for x1 numbers for cabinets. That doesn't make sense. constraints guys which ones are the units I mean the, the resources we're using lumber plywood, cardboard. Okay. Okay, guys. What is the constraint? What is the inequality for lumber? And again, be careful with the order. Uh, James, remember, inequality, it is not only a number. It is not only the number of resources available. Uh, William, I'm talking about lumber. Jonathan, you just earned 95%. Yes, Douglas, thank you. So this is 30x1 plus 30x2 plus 30x3. This has to be less than or equal to 1800. Okay, I'm going to use yellow. So here, for bulletin boards, we need 30 board feet of lumber. So that is 30 x2. Then mirrors require 30 board feet of lumber. So that is 30 x1. And cabinets require 30 board feet of lumber. So that's 30 x3. And then we know that we have 18, 1800 board feet of lumber available. Okay, guys. Plywood. Who told me plywood? 
uh, a couple a couple of minutes ago. Thank you, William. Uh, William, the hotkey oh on PC. Ah uh, no, I don't know. On Mac it is option and less than, but plywood on uh, on PC, I don't know. Sorry about it. So yes, this is gonna be 17x1 plus 5x3. This is gonna be less than or equal to 500. And it goes as this, purple. Uh, but you know what, um, William? Don't say or, just say the less than and then use the equal sign immediately afterwards. Okay, so for plywood, we have crates for mirrors, which is X1, 17 square feet of plywood. And we need, uh, where else? Oh, five square feet of plywood for cabinets. So cabinets is X3, so this is 5X3, and we have 500 available. Okay, the last one is easy, cardboard. Um, Jonathan, I'm sorry. You switch again. Oh, no, 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 actually you're correct. What you're doing is switching the variables with the numbers. So you have 60x2 plus 20x1. So that's correct. Now, um, it looks better if you type it as William did in a, with the variables in order. So this is going to be 20x1 plus 60x2 plus 50x2. 3, and this has to be less than or equal to 2,700. And uh, William, now uh, the less than or equal to looks awesome. That or in the middle looks awful. Okay. So this is going to be red, and we have the information here. 60, four bulletin boards. So 60x2, yes. 24 mirrors, 20x1. And then 50 and 2700. Okay, guys, questions about the setup? Okay, awesome. Oh, James has a question. Oh, James, tell me. Sorry, I didn't. Re I didn't see you. Um, actually, William, I prefer people asking, but like a long sentence so I can see everything. James, yes, you are correct. It doesn't matter. Well, actually, oh yeah, yeah, well, depending on the letters, but as I told you, it's better to use one, two, three, and four, and five because we want to keep things organized. So they are easy to read, easy to understand. Sometimes when you take for easy at the beginning, like X, Y, Z, and then start with letters A, B, C, becomes a mess uh, when you're working with that. Or if you're going to present it to somebody else, 
that somebody else is not going to understand what you're doing, and it's going to have a hard time trying to understand. Okay, guys, for, for the second part, so many steps. Now, you know what? I'm going to go actually with this one. Oh, no, no, you can use X, Y, Z or X1, X2, X3 if you want. It doesn't matter. Recommendation, numbering. So first step. Download the um, the temp the Excel template provided on the assignment on assignment two point four. So what I'm going to do here? No, this is not going to be two. This is going to be like this. Okay. So, well, I downloaded mine. It is here. This is the, this is the template you should uh, download. Even though here you have all the explanations, I'm going to explain how to fill it out. First, uh, put names and labels on the green cells. Only names and labels. So here, first of all, what is the problem name? What is the name of the problem? Can you tell me what is the name of, the, of this problem we're talking about? Can you give me a nice label? <laughs> awesome, Brian. Creative, great company optimization. Well, if you said only crates or great optimization would be awesome, but it would be okay, but this is awesome. Okay, we can give names to the variables. What is X1? X1 is crates for mirrors. So I'm going to say mirrors. Only one word, that's enough. And for number two, bulletin boards. And for X3, we have cabinets. Okay. Then, what is the objective function? Uh, James? Okay, thank you, Zach. Profit. The objective function is profit. And then we have to use the constraints. And as James said, uh, this is going to be lumber. This is going to be plywood. And this is going to be cardboard. OK. Actually, we don't need this, and we don't need this. We don't need this variable, and we don't need this variable. Here, what are we looking for, max or min? Oh, well, actually, we're looking for the max. And here, the name, it says here, created by. I'm creating it. Sorry, guys. I'm going to take full credit for this. Oh, and one more thing. We don't need the last two columns. And we don't need the last two rows here. And that is going to give me space.
Hiding the missing off, it's not a big deal. Okay, now, next part. Uh, put the corresponding numbers on the formulas. On the formulas on the blue cells. So, what formulas do we have? We have the profit formula. So, what are the numbers for the profit? 5, 2, and 10. 5, 2, and 10. Oh, one thing. I have to, I, I hope I don't forget. Um, do not include any variable on those cells. So only 5, 2, and 10. Then the numbers for each one of the constraints. So 30, 30, 30, and then this is going to be, what is this? I don't remember. Oh, 1,800. Oh, this is less than or equal to. Now, plywood, we have the formula 17, 0. Be careful because we're not using x2, so we have to use 0. And then 5. And this is less than 500. And then finally, for cardboard, we have 20, 60, 50. And then this is uh, 2,700. Okay, so those were the blue cells. The variables are represented on the orange blank cells. Do not put anything there since the solutions will appear on those cells. Oh, no, 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 it doesn't matter if you don't use the zero. Or even if you don't type anything here. The only thing that we need to know is zero is the same as nothing. And common mistake, when people don't see a variable, they use a one. And I don't understand why. Okay, so zero or nothing. Don't change the zero to a one. That's the only thing I have, I have to tell you. Okay, so here, the variables are going to be here on x1, x2, x3. So the numbers, the, the results are going to appear here. Finally, um, use the purple cells to uh, for formulas. The LHS column calculates the left hand side of the inequalities. That is it multiplies the coefficient with the, the coefficient with the variable. Actually, the coefficients with the variables and add them. To do that, use the formula and be careful here, keep the, keep the format of this. So this is gonna be equal. Some product, parenthesis. Select the coefficients, comma, select the variables. Okay, so I'm gonna show you here. 
So here on LHS, this is going to be equal to some product. Open parenthesis. Select the coefficients, comma, select the variables. Hit enter. Do the same thing for the other three, or well, all the inequalities that you have. Equal to some product variables, I mean coefficients, comma, variables. You can hit enter. This is equal to some product uh, coefficients, comma, variables. And finally, this is equal to. Oh no, some product. This is coefficients, comma, variables. Okay, now here the results are zeros because we don't have anything on the orange cells. If I put a five here, all the results on the on the LHS column, LHS column changes. So that's the reason you get zeros because we don't have anything here yet. The slack column calculates the number of resources left. And it is calculated by subtracting the number of resources available, that is right hand side, minus the number of resources used. This is LHS. So here the only thing you have to do is, well, this cell is going to be equal to right hand side minus left hand side, equal to left hand side minus, oh, right hand side minus left hand side. And this is equal to right hand side minus left hand side. Okay. Okay, guys, questions about how to set up this um, template. Yep, I've been trying to be really straightforward about it. Awesome, thank you, William. Okay, second part. Open solver. It is located on the tools menu. If it is not on the menu, go to add-ins on the tools menu and select. Yes, William, we're talking about Excel. I'm not changing anything. Well, I have to change the word because I'm typing, but you don't have to. Okay, so here, Tools. Here is solver at the end, but if you don't have it, add ins. On add ins, you have solver, you check it, and that's going to be okay. Okay, so now, tools, solver. This is how you use solver. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you how to use it, then I'm going to show you what, what to use. Okay, 
set objective is the cell that contains the calculation of the objective function. So what you have to do here is select it. Here on, on Excel, uh oh, that's not what I wanted. Uh, what is the cell that contains the objective function? Now you know what? Give me a second. Um, I'm going to ask you, we're going to set it up later because I want to avoid problems with the... No, actually we can do it. Okay. So what is the cell that contains the, um, the calculations for the objective function? G3, yes, here. The left hand side for profit. Okay. So next, make sure. Make sure you select maximum or minimum according to what you need to find. Then by changing. Variable cells is the box for the variables. So select the orange blank cells. So here, coming back to solver, I'm on by changing variable cells, select the orange blank cells. There you go. Now, subject to the constraints is um, represents each one of the constraints and they should be in the form left hand side is going to be less than or equal to right hand side. Remember, LHS is a calculation. It calculates the coefficients and the variables. So that is the left hand side of the equation. Well, here on the on the spreadsheet, oh uh, no. That's what I don't like about this, okay. Okay, so for the constraints, what you need is LHS, the calculation, minus a, less than or equal to the number of the number of um, resources available. Okay, so now add. So this is going to be LHS is less than RHS. Add. LHS is less than or equal to RHS. Add LHS is going to be less than or equal to RHS. Okay, so we're almost done. Make sure uh, the unconstrained variables non negative is selected and the solving method is a uh, simplex LP. So here simplex LP. Press solve the solutions will appear on the orange cells, well, not the solutions, the configuration.
the configuration will appear on the orange shells and the maximum or minimum appears well where does it appear Ooh. okay so solve as you can see here we get 10 0 and 50 so we have to produce 10 crates for mirrors 50 crates for cabinets and no bulletin boards what is the maximum profit Five hundred and fifty on the LHS or LHS profit. Um, no profit, no objective function. Sell. Whew. Okay. So now. So, using solver, the so uh, we have to produce ten crates for mirrors, uh, zero for bulletin boards, and fifty for cabinets. To obtain, um, to obtain a, um, a maximum profit of five hundred and fifty dollars, and just to help you, I'm going to copy paste everything here. Okay, you can understand. However, one thing that I have to add here. A note. On the final document. No, you know what? Give me a second. Okay, so on the on this one, on the spreadsheet, you can see the Slack column. No, William, it's not like a waste of resources. It is like uh, if you produce more of the other ones, you can get a better profit. You can make a profit with bulletin boards. However, it is not as good as the one with cabinets. Yeah, I was going to talk about Slack, but uh, I saw William's comment. So the Slack, here on this column, we have the Slack. So Slack is the number of resources left with that information with the Slack. Try to improve the results trying to avoid ooh, to avoid any slack so try to improve the results try to improve them the what the um, the profit or the objective function probably by using more resources or something like that so that's the only thing that, that is left uh, for you Include a small paragraph. Uh, well, even a sentence. Include a small explanation about it on the written document. Okay, guys, questions. I'm done explaining. It is your time to ask for questions. Oh, 
one more thing. If you want the notes, please email me now. Hmm. No, Jonathan, we have had so much trouble uh, recording sessions lately. The web page is changing, the software is changing, and uh, there is a conflict with the latest a a iOS. Yes, Brian, I'm here on Sundays and Mondays. Yes, actually the same link, yeah. Or actually, well, I think you have to register for the session next week. So you're going to get a new, a new link. Awesome, Jonathan. Awesome, William. That's good. What uh, the other times? The times were horrible. Ah, that's bad. Yeah, well the, the sessions here for this for this class are late. Well actually there are two late, the ones on Sunday and Monday. The one on Tuesday is a little bit earlier, like around seven, so four in the west. And we have a session at noon on Wednesdays. So I think there are no excuses. Okay, guys, if you send me the email, now uh, you can go. You're welcome, James.